Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and fans to the channel, you're watching Ham Radio Concepts. And what I'm about to show you is a presentation on what is probably the most catastrophic advancement to ham radio that we know of. That's right. Imagine keyboard to keyboard rag chew on FT8. And the new mode is FT8 Call. Let's check it out. The place to come for amateur radio videos. Jordan Shear, KN4CRD, has taken what I like about FT8 mode and what I can't stand about FT8 mode and has put them together, shook it around, did some encoding, and came out with this next generation wave of digital mode called FT8 Call. Next generation, but why am I making such a big deal of that? Eric, why are you being so dramatic? Well, if you haven't figured out yet, let's go back to FT8, okay? If you haven't figured out yet, FT8 has ruled the airwaves on ham radio. And that's not what I'm just saying. That is a proven fact that more than 50% of the people watching my video right now are using nothing but FT8. That's a fact. In fact, I'm going to go right now and look at PSK Reporter, and we're going to show you what kind of impact FT8 has on a daily, even in the last 15 minutes. Let's check it out. We're going to look at pskreporter.info. I have a video on this as well to show you how this site is and what you can do with it. So I'm going to filter real quick. On all bands, I want to show the signals sent and received by anyone using FT8 in the last 15 minutes. And let's look at this. Whoa! It looks like a rainbow here. We got colors everywhere. There's your DX. There's your DX right there. Your DX is on FT8, apparently. Your DX is on FT8. That's why you can't find DX on phone because they're all here on FT8. But what happens to all these is nobody on this map is having a keyboard to keyboard conversation. Every one of those is an exchange of a call sign a grid square, and a signal report, and a 7-3. Okay, now, we're going to go to one of my favorite pastimes, PSK-31, over the last 15 minutes. Wah, wah, wah. There you go. 29 active monitors here. <clears throat> Not a lot of stations here, okay? In fact, if you go back to FT8, I think there's 2,538. Okay, so a lot of stations here, a lot of contacts, a lot of monitors. But... Let's go to RTTY. Nothing. That's a shame. That is a shame. I tell you what, though, on a ready contest, you'll see this thing lit up. Let's try one more. Let's try JT65. Where is JT65? And I'm getting all these modes, too, one day. You're going to see some Thor and some Domino X and stuff, so stay tuned. Uh, JT65. Okay. A couple. 21, whatever. So, not a lot. It's all FT8, guys. That's where it is. Now, if I go to FT8 Call, as my little time capsule video suggests, there's a couple. There's a few. Okay? Not a lot, because not a lot of people know about it yet. Not a lot of people have joined the group to get the experimental software. But, it's there. Now, at the time you're watching this video, it may be six months later, I wonder how many are on the map. But right now, not a lot. So, this is what I have to work with on my receiving end and making contacts. But that's the current state to show you what FT8 does and what FT8 is going to do. FT8 call is going to do. You're going to see this map change dramatically. I promise you that. So if you're using FT8 currently or you have used FT8, you'll feel, as they say, right at home when you look at the software. It's not much different than the original WSJTX software. Again, derived from that software, but not the same creator. Now looking at this overall, of course you have your waterfall or audio passband down at the bottom 
showing you the signals and the stations of the FT8 call. On the left, you have your band activity. Now, your band activity is showing you everything on this pass band. All these stations are popping up here, whether they're beaconing, calling CQ, or uh, or having conversations or whatever. And we'll we'll show you that uh, later on. So, on the right, you have your stations, your call signs that you've heard calling CQ. It shows you the uh, distance between you and them once you fill out your information and settings. Their grid square, their signal at the time, how long ago they were on here, and their call sign. So you can see these were all the uh, stations calling CQ. In the middle, you have your message window. Now your message window is where all the magic happens. This is what makes it different, some of it what makes it different from FT8. Now here you can see that we had a couple stations having a rag chew. Derek in uh, grid FK88, St. Martin. Uh, I think that's good afternoon, Derek. Name Leo. 5 watts, 80 meter off center fed dipole. Um, good afternoon, Leo. MCHF SDR, 5 watt quarter wave vertical. And I hope that's good afternoon. <laughs> good signal into West Central Georgia, I guess. Uh, Rick doing a great job. So you can see they're actually talking here. And they gave a signal report and such. 73. Thank you for QSO, Derek. And some other stuff here. Now, this is a little bit different the way it operates from FT8. And I'll explain. Now, FT8, you're answering somebody calling CQ, and you see this counter on the bottom here. There's a 15-second window or 15-second transmit time. And I think uh, FT8 was, what, 13 seconds transmit and 2 seconds of decoding for one transmission of your call, their call, and a grid square or whatever. Well, now what it's doing is it's taking your message and it's breaking it up into multiple 15-second transmissions. So, if I wanted to transmit a message, this message would take, if you look at the send button, four transmissions to send that one sentence. Now, again, being that it can decode 24 dB below the noise floor um, it you know the way the encoding is it's not as fast as something like PSK or uh, uh, Olivier Contestia that's based on the, the bandwidth and the encoding and stuff like that so you're watching somebody's signal draw in, in increments so when this came in I saw good signal into West Central I guess Georgia today Derek, MCHF, and then Rig doing great. So I saw that in multiple come in. How do you know when that person's transmission is finished? How do I know when they're done? Because when it first came in, I saw good signal into us. Okay, well, maybe they dropped off. No, it's transmitting multiple parts of that message to get it across. So how do you know when it's done? This little character down here. This looks like a tilde on the keyboard. Also looks like a sideways lightning bolt. But this indicates from the computer, from the transmitting end, end of transmission. They're done. Your turn. And at that point, you can hit send, and you're sending. Now, as you're sending, you're sending over everyone that is, of course, sending also. But this person is now receiving, hopefully. So when you see this, that's end of transmission, and it's your turn. Now, uh, on the bottom here, on the pass band, you see each green line indicates 15 seconds of time. And also with this message window, you're only going to see this when you place your decoder cursor here on that signal on the passband. So over here on the left, you're seeing everything. But when you want to see right here, see 10 watts, 80 meter, O. Oh. Now watch, you're going to see the next part of that come in when he's 15 seconds is done. And there it is. 10 watt, 80 meter off center fed dipole at 2. And look, it's fading, but it's still decoding. You can barely see it, but it's still decoding. And it's coming back up. Now watch. At, say, probably 20 feet or 20 watts. Ooh, 23 feet. I was close. Okay, look. He's done. Now it's the other person's turn to make the transmission to follow up. So you're understanding. Hopefully you're with me so far. Okay? Now, um, if I wanted to transmit somewhere, I could transmit over here. I could transmit over here. Looking at the software also around here, we'll look at the top here. You have all your frequencies for the suggested 
contacting or you know, suggested frequencies for contact. You know, normally uh, FT8 is like 14.074, and they suggest 14.080 or plus or minus 4 kilohertz from the FT8 frequency. No, FT8 will not decode on FT8 call software. It is two different types of encoding. So you will not uh, see that on here, and vice versa. FT8 call will not show up on WSJTX. So, all these frequencies here, if you're connected like I am to Ham Radio Deluxe, uh, you can change your radio frequencies from here. On the bottom left down here, this is your uh, your signal from my radio USB out of my IC7300 here, so I can adjust audio levels. All right. Um, over here is your transmit audio level for output. Remember, you could leave your power up on the radio, and you want to turn your your gains and stuff down to get minimum ALC and and reduce your power. Unless you want to be one of those crazy guys that's using this at a thousand watts. I've seen it all the time. You don't have to run FT8 at a thousand watts. Not designed for that. But uh, I guess you can. Come out with the haters in the comments. Anyways, up on top here you have your clock and stuff. I'll tell you about Beacon in a second. Up in the top right, a couple buttons to note. Your receive would be the difference between receiving and not receiving. You see the waterfall stops. Auto. Now the auto button, if you enable that, the, the software has some other cool things in here like, uh, 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 what do you call them, uh, commands? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, I guess commands. So, auto would mean if somebody, you see this right here, all call with a question mark. Now, all call, if you put that in there, is going to call for anybody listening. All call. And if you put question mark, which is one of the commands, you're basically saying, CQ to anybody, what is my signal to noise ratio? So if you have auto enabled and your software sees that, it's automatically going to, as you see I did here, it's automatically going to reply to that person in question with the signal to noise ratio that they're asking for. So if you don't want to be transmitting that stuff, turn the trans the auto off because it will, as it sees that, it will uh, go ahead and send that back to them. Now, the beacon button. The beacon is basically, when you turn beacon on, you'll see the timer starts. Now that's going to throw, here's a beacon here, see? This is beaconing here. And it's going to be timed. And the beacon is not to, uh, not for propagation. It's not designed for to report propagation. What it's for is to get more stations populated in your herd list over here so that you know, hey, um, these people I could hear so I could reach these people. Because if, if nobody's talking, okay, we're going to go back to like HF, back to my rant on HF. If nobody is talking, you're not going to hear anybody. And if you don't hear anybody, you're not going to talk to them. So by turning your beacon on, if you're just sitting here looking around, that's letting any station that can hear you know, hey, I, two minutes ago, I just heard this person. He beaconed. I could potentially make contact with him, and I can make a directed message, okay? And look, here's your commands. What's my signal report? What is your QTH? What's your station message, your station power, and yada, yada. So that's pretty cool. People are beaconing, and that shows me here. You know, maybe this guy 14 minutes ago, the propagation's gone, but the guy two minutes ago, chances are, at a negative 0.5, I could hear him and work him, okay? So that's what the beacon is for. If you turn that on, it's going to beacon. If you turn it off, it won't. Now, the spot button, another cool button. This is going to take these stations that it's hearing and their signals, and it's going to submit that information over the Internet to the pskreporter.info website. So if you go to PSK Reporter and you see all those stations and you're wondering, well, how are they hearing me? What are they doing? Well, this is basically acting the same way. It's spotting all these people. So that will help on the PSK Reporter info site to see what stations are being heard. Um, and the log, if you turn the log on, you'll fill all this out and uh, it'll you know uh, save it as a log. So with the commands and stuff, you know, pretty cool. Um, and, and directed versus, you know, standard messages. If I wanted to send a directed message, I could over here on the right, see HK4KM, he's calling CQ. I could right click, send a directed message. 
send the message. See? Or you could type it in. But what it's doing is it's directing that to him. Hi, this is Eric. I see 7,325 plots. I could do that. And that's going to go to him. And it's going to pop up on his screen that it's to him. Okay? If I were to send just the macro over here, CQ, it's going to send that. And mine's going to pop up in the left over here. So hopefully you're still with me. I know I'm trying to cover it all at one take. Um, there are also macros, as you may see um, in other programs like PSK that are used widely for not having to type all those. And again, you want to keep your... You can see how everybody's abbreviating because... Uh, I'll call Thunderstorms QRT. Oh. So he's saying there's thunderstorms. He's got to get off. He's getting off. Um, so if you go up here to file and you go to uh, settings and you go to macros, this is where you can add your macros so that you can do that. Now, please, I beg you, can we do a little bit of typing and not automate the whole thing? It's designed to type right here. Can we just type a couple and save macros for 7.3 and CQ? It's just my two cents. Um, the way I have mine set right now, um, I have some information here. My grid, my station message, and stuff like that. This here, I'm not sure. I just picked that. I'm not sure if, I, I guess, oh, I, that's right. I confused myself. If somebody asks with the command, send your station power, this is preset. Now, hopefully nobody's on 1,000 watts. Um, but if you were running 25 watts or 20 watts, as they sent that command, it will return with this number right here. All right. Um, my radio, I have set up with ham radio deluxe. Cat PTT, rear data for audio on USB, uh, upper sideband, and uh, the rest is history. You can hit test cat, and if it turns green, it'll let you know that it is communicating with the receiver or transceiver, and your settings are good. For some reason, it takes a minute before that comes back, even though I'm connected. You'll see here in about five seconds, it'll turn green. There it is. Um, audio, you want to have uh, your sound card interface, whatever you're using. This is what I'm using for my 7300, a built-in sound card interface. And, uh, of course, your transmit macros and your frequencies. If you wanted to uh, change the, f the predefined frequencies up here, you could. Um, but, uh, you know, even frequency schedule, automatically switch bands, frequencies at specific times of the day if you want to. You can see here I have a really strong signal right here. Um, and again, with this being experimental at the moment and brand new at the time you're watching this video, there's not a whole bunch of people on here. So the more people that find out about this, the more people that get on, you're going to see a gang of stations here. And let me tell you, it's going to be packed. I can see this already. This is going to be a wildfire by storm. There is no, there is no reason not to stay on FT8 when you can do the same performance level with rag chewing now some people may not be into talking and that's fine you could you don't want to talk great I, I get you but i don't really like ft8 this is really interesting to me i i really have interest in this being that i want to use extremely low power on qrp in my backpack out in the field with minimal antenna so this may be a winner for me i may start using this but not all the time uh, so hopefully this tour of FT8, uh, really, or FT8 call, excuse me, wow, excuse me, hopefully this video of FT8 call gave you the initiative, uh, you have to do a little bit of digging online to find where to download this, this version will expire in September, from what I'm told, because it's a experimental release, but if you are interested and you just Google it and find it, join the group, download the software, try it out. Try it at low power. See if it compares to your FT8 and how it works and how you like it. And leave a comment below and a thumbs up for me giving you this material. Whether you like FT8 or FT8 call or not, please give me a thumbs up just for bringing this to your screen. 7-3, and I hope to see you on the bands from KJ4YZI.